So okay, here is a method which is guaranteed to work. And let me start from the end and say why it is guaranteed to work. Because it is based on the proof of existence of Jordan basis that you can find in Sheldon Axler's Linear Algebra Done Right book and, and which you can also see in a previous video from this series where we prove existence of a Jordan basis for a new potent operator and from there uh, how can you prove existence of Jordan basis for any complex operator and here is the algorithm I will not explain it into details because it's really complicated and it can really make your life messy. The PDF I'm showing right here, it is available on my webpage. So I invite you to look at that PDF and read it and make sense of this algorithm here. But later on, I will give an algorithm which is maybe not as efficient as this, as this one, but certainly simpler and is also guaranteed to work. But very quickly, uh, how does this guaranteed method work? Well, again, you have to find eigenvalues. You can never get rid of this, of course. And then for each eigenvalue, we define the new potent operator. And we compute, actually, the matrix corresponding to this new potent operator, to all the powers of it. And then we solve this equation to find the basis for the generalized eigenspace. And we use that basis. That basis has very little to do with the basis we're going to use in the end. It's just a temporary thing that we use to make computations. And now we reproduce the proof. We start from un equals zero, and then we have the empty set is a Jordan basis for that subspace. And we keep going back, just reproducing exactly what we did in the proof. We're just now giving names to those variables and collections of vectors that will be convenient. So we do that. We find what is a basis for each subspace by simply applying n to the k to the original basis that we had for g. And then we solve the equation by when we want to extend it, we just solve the equation here to add a new vector here at the end of the basis. This, as in the proof, if you go back and see the proof carefully, slowly and little by little, may not have enough many vectors to span the whole subspace. Uh, so we find a new collection of vectors that when we add it, now we have a basis, but problem is it's no longer a Jordan basis. If you remember, that, that's now I'm going to the last part of the proof. That's when we want to fix and just go from having this collection AK here, we want to modify this AK and get some AK tilde so that this is now a Jordan basis. And we keep going down and down and we repeat this process for each lambda. We repeat this again and again. And in theory, this solves the problem, but you will see in the handout that the application of this method is quite cumbersome to be done by a human being. You have all this notation and all these proceed proceeds to follow. And if you skim through the file, you see here, this was the simplest case where very quick and very dirty just gave us the solution without even having to solve a linear system. Well, we had to compute the inverse, but whatever. And if you look this very simple case, what it looks like if we want to apply the previous method, it is this long. We're introducing notation and notation and giving names and keep going and uh, looking at some augmented matrix, doing row reduction, and then looking again, and then decreasing. You start with some trivial spaces, empty set, and you increase that, and it keeps going until in the end you find the, you find the basis, which is different from the previous one, but nevertheless is also a Jordan basis, and it works. If we look at the second example, you see how it can, it can become now much more cumbersome. For the simple eigenvalue, so lambda equal uh, one, lambda equal two, which is the simple eigenvalue, which is an eigenvalue of a generalized eigenspace that has dimension one. So really there's nothing to do there. Even there, for that eigenvalue, you see how complicated it gets. It's, it's just find an eigenvalue, but all this algorithm, okay, maybe it was over the top to work it out like this. But now for the other generalized eigenspace, you see all the amount of work that is involved. So I invite you to look at this PDF file and try to understand it if you're interested. 
If not, let's uh, stop this video and now I'll give you a different proof of existence of Jordan bases to, to neopotent operators that we can do some much more, um, maybe it doesn't involve fewer computations or n is not less demanding, but it's certainly uh, less rigid in its application and you may find it easier to compute eigen Jordan basis using that method.